Hi everyone and welcome back to Waterhouse Ford and uh, Happy New Year to all of you. This is the first full video of the year. We did do a short video um, between Christmas and New Year and uh, in fact no I think it was the first week of January actually we did that first video and um, obviously we announced the lucky winner of our giveaway and um, Michael from Norway was the, was the lucky winner. Now sadly because of all of the um, restrictions around Covid and Travelling and more importantly, um, courier and parcel service uh, has been interrupted and uh, we are struggling a little bit to, to get his prize to him, but I um, guarantee you, Marco, we will get it to you as soon as we possibly can. In fact, I have, I think, made some progress and I think that this coming week uh, we have a slot booked uh, to get that out to you. And uh, It might take a week or two to get there, but uh, it, it will get there. So anyway, today um, what I thought we'd do is uh, we're going to move on with the engine. Um, first thing I think to do will be to get the camshaft back in, uh, get the camshaft followers back in, uh, and then start working on all of the timing gears, um, etc., on the front of the engine, um, and try and get that um, get that finished today. That's probably about as far as we go uh, today. Um, what I'm aiming for as quickly as possible now really is to get the head, the cylinder head, back on the engine. Uh, mostly to cover it up and, and essentially to keep the, the cylinders clean. Uh, but also because then we can start uh, moving on with the engine in terms of getting the, um, the flywheel and, and, uh, and in fact getting the engine back onto the tractor itself. So that's the, the kind of high level target for now. Um, but anyway, so today hopefully we'll get as far as the timing gears and all of that and um, get get the front of the engine finished off. Okay. Yeah. Anything you want to do? Say? No. No. Alright, so um, yeah, uh, follow along. We'll, uh, we'll try and show you what we're doing along the way. It's relatively straightforward, so I don't know that there's a whole bunch that we can teach you um, but we'll just well just follow along and see and see how we go and if we come across something of of interest and we'll we'll stop and we'll we'll uh, make note of it so um, yeah hope you enjoy okay just very quickly these are all the bits that we need um, for the camshaft the uh, so we got the camshaft here we've got the camshaft followers um, all the different gears the weights the idler um, poly, uh, idler throwouts uh, we've got the new, two new timing chain from Anglo um, which is part number, hang on, it's not, not uh, focusing on. Oh, sorry. Is uh, A45872. If you can see that, yep. And then, um, Ow. yeah, all the, just all the bits and pieces. And the main thing, I suppose, is the camshaft, and then obviously this front plate, and then the, yeah. the um, timing chain gears which we'll uh, we'll get on as well. So uh, yeah, let's get let's get going. This thing's heavy. Mhm. Mm okay, so we've got the um the camshaft here. What we want to do these surfaces here are the main um essentially they run in a bearing um inside the the block. So we want to oil those up nicely. Obviously, you've got your your cam uh, lobes and they need to be oiled up as well but we'll oil them once they're once it's in by dropping oil down on top of them and be before we put the oil cam I mean the valve followers on uh, push rod followers um, this is um, yeah obviously it's been nicely cleaned it's uh, obviously been standing a little bit so it does have a little bit of um, scale on it so I'm going to give it just a quick clean um, just to brighten it up a bit before we put it back in, but there's no there's no actual corrosion on it, um, so those those surfaces will be fine. So I'll just quickly do that and then we'll come back. Okay. So, Oscar, now we're going to slide the camshaft in. Yeah. From this side, see, it goes in here, right, and it goes all the way through. And each of these is a a bearing face. That one, that one, that one, and that one. And then you've got your two lobes per cylinder. This is the uh, gear that drives, that comes, that sits, lines up with your distributor. Okay. So it drives the distributor from the top on the top, but at the bottom it also drives the oil pump. Do you remember when we were servicing the oil pump? Yeah. 
So what we're going to do, we're going to put a little film of grease onto each of those bearing faces just to help it um, uh, so that it's pre-lubricated prior to running. You see how each of these has a groove on it? Yeah. And that groove like basically... Like a screw. Huh? Bit like a screw. Yeah, it is. It's a very large thread, screw thread basically, a large pitch screw thread and that basically pushes oil all around the the bearing face. Okay, that's cool. You don't want to get too much grease in there then. See there's a flat there, so yes. the flat picks up the oil and then it, whichever way this is turning it basically pushes the oil all the way around. So yeah, no, we don't need a lot of grease, that's the, the thing. We just need a bit to um, get it lubricated on its, essentially on its first um, start-up. Yeah. Now I notice you're wearing your best top, so Maybe. you'll have to keep yourself clean, okay? Because yeah. mommy will kill us if um, <laughs> you get any grease on it. Yeah. Now, when you're putting this in, I remember when we were taking it out, it's, it's, quite a, it's a bit of a jiggle, basically, getting it in. Because you've got to line up, all, well not line up, but you have to go through all four of these bearing faces. Well, I better do this then so you don't get full of grease. Now, we obviously check which way this goes, right? So the gear needs to be in line with the distributor, which is essentially in the front of the engine. So we know that this has to be in the front, so that will go that way. That's one way to do it. The other way to tell is that in the front here we've got the holes for the um, timing gear so we know that this has to go in this way. So you have to just, as I said, just kind of work it through and turn it slightly as you go, lifting it again when you get, let me come around the other side I think. Okay. So sorry, what's this one called again? I have in my mind crankshaft, but I don't think that's right. This is the camshaft. Okay, camshaft. Okay. Now we're at the last one and it's really difficult because you can't actually lift it. So you have to put your hand in underneath mm. to lift it to get it to go into Oh, yeah, up. And that. There we go. And that's it. It's in. Mm. It's as simple as that, really. And then poking out the other yeah, side. too far in. Yeah, there's a... Uh... Now it's poking out this side! <laughs> yeah, we'll find the right position in a minute. Okay, now Oscar, you can see there where the gear is. Look at the gear on the yeah. camshaft. It's there. Now where do you think it needs to be? It needs to probably be... Either there or there, depending on the size of in, in the, the It needs to be in the middle, right? So if you move the camshaft over until that's roughly in the middle. Okay, now put that gear in. And get it to mesh. Does it mesh? I think... I think... Yeah. Uh, no, oh, no, no, don't turn it. There we go, it's engaged. Okay. So that's about it. Now what we can also see... Now the other thing that we can see, there's a groove in the front of the camshaft there. And there's actually a, a plate that goes on there to hold it in place. But there's actually another plate that goes on here, and that's why we don't know the exact position just yet. So, we've got it roughly lined up now with that um, gear. That's good enough for now. Now we can continue work on the front end knowing that this is pretty much where we need it to be okay so let's yeah. do that let's move on yeah okay now the next thing we're going to do is to put this plate on uh, but we know that there's a gasket that needs to go on here and remember we also want to put some aviation cement uh, here where we damaged this face so we're going to that's basically the next job we'll do that quickly Okay, we've got the gasket out of the gasket set, so we can see how that lines up. 
We've got two alignment pins, one here and one here, so that helps the gasket to stay where it needs to be, which is really helpful. One thing to note, there is a, a hole in the gasket there, but there's no corresponding hole in the block. You will get that from time to time with these pre-made gaskets. Um, I think it's because sometimes the gasket is designed to work with another engine, for example, where they may well have something there, um, or it's just somehow in the pattern, and um, nobody's ever really bothered to take it out because it doesn't ultimately make any, any difference. We can see on the surface of the plate, the plate that we're going to put on next, uh, that there was a hole in the previous gasket there as well because of the witness mark on the plate. So it's obviously something that's been like that for a very long time. Anyway, in order to help this gasket to seal, we're going to put a very thin uh, layer of grease all the way around the surface. Um, it helps it to seal, but also it um, obviously just helps the gasket stay in place. And uh, if for any reason we find that we need to remove this, if we've made some sort of mistake and we have to take this off again in the short term, then we know as well that it will um, come off easily because, it's because of the grease. The other thing I need to do is just put some aviation cement uh, around that area there to help that to seal as well. Okay, so I've got this locked, it's also a locked up product, uh, MR5922, um, which is, it's a non-hardening gasket sealant. Um, so hopefully that's going to help us with this sort of dodgy area that we've got here. It, um, it says that you can use it instead of the gasket or along with the gasket, so that's what we're going to do. Obviously here is use it with the gasket. I'm not quite sure how you're supposed to... Oh, there we go. Seems very runny. Maybe it just needs to be mixed a bit. I'm going to try and put a bit more... rather too much than too little around this area here. It will squeeze out what it doesn't need, hopefully. Oh, pheasants are going mental. <laughs> okay, so that hopefully will help that area to seal up. Okay, so now we can pop this gasket on. Get it lined up. And get it to seal nicely around this area make sure that it's lying flat everywhere I have a question mm -hmm. why are you only putting that Loctite stuff up at the top? Because that's the area that I've damaged with the when I was trying to get the stud up with the angle not the angle grinder, the grinder. Okay. So there's a piece there that's there's a section there around that hole that's damaged. Okay. So that's why I'm using that stuff because it um, acts as a an additional gasket basically. Okay. You can use it the whole way around, right? Uh, I mean I could have done that. I um, generally speaking don't use these um, sealants but um, I've obviously elected to in this, on this occasion because the area was damaged and there was no way I could fix it. Yeah. So there we go, that plate goes on like that. Now before we tighten any of the others I want to get this uh, plate in to hold the camshaft as well and there are three, obviously three bolts to hold that. You can see one, two, three hold to hold that as well. So that basically slides in there. And we can see that that's not going to slide in without moving the camshaft. So we know the camshaft is slightly wrong. There we go. It's now in. Ever so slightly. It's um, really not a lot to it. And we now can put these bolts in. 
and that just holds the cam stops the camshaft from moving backwards and forwards. And these are uh, half inch bolts, so we'll just get those in quickly. Now we don't want to tighten these too much just yet, we want to align the rest of it. Now, most of these are actually, um, the, it's the cover that holds this on. Um, so we can't really tighten them on just yet. But because of the sealant here, what I'm, I'm going to do is put three bolts in here, just to put, press this down to start to sort, form a seal. Okay, I've got three bolts here. They're not the... They're not the actual bolts for the cover, they're actually slightly shorter. I'm just a bit concerned uh, about putting the long bolts on without the, the cover on. So they're slightly shorter, they're from somewhere else, I'm not entirely sure where. And I've just got three flat washers just to help spread the load a bit. And uh, we'll get these in, in here, hopefully. This is our newly threaded hole so that one's going to be difficult we'll try and we may have to just jiggle this plate around a little bit let me just loosen these a bit Okay, now we come to the part um, of putting these cam followers in. Um, now, you'll see it's like a cup, right? And it, uh, obviously the, the closed face, this, this shiny face, that goes down towards the camshaft. And you've basically got two in each of these holes. You can't see it on the camera, but if you look down there, you'll see there's a hole for each one. Um, now what we need to do is obviously put a reasonable amount of oil down that hole to get onto the cam lobe. Um, we'll put a fair amount on the actual follower itself and essentially that will pop down or you need to pop that down into that hole. It's a good fit if you see what I mean it'll it should just slide down under its own sorry it won't just slide down down under its own weight you will need to give it a little push but you'll feel that it'll go down uh, without much resistance uh, making sure that we've got plenty of oil on that all the way down there we go that's the first two in you want to do one, Oscar? Yeah. Okay. So, if you... Do you see the hole down there? You can just see the, the cam lobe. Yeah. So you get that nicely coated in oil. Okay. Okay, I've smothered that in oil, so you can now just pop that in. Give me that. Okay. And, uh, so you, that way? Yeah. Yeah, put your thumb against it, hold it between your finger and thumb and just get it into that hole and give it a little push and you'll feel it'll go down. Got it? It's going. Let me feel, hang on, I don't want you to force anything. You shouldn't have to force it. Yep, yeah, no, you just need to... Wiggle it until it lines up and then it slides down, no problem. So, I'll do the next one. Do you want to do it? No? No, I'm fine. Give that copious amounts of oil. And just slide it down. <coughs> and so we go on. <coughs> 
Now I think we're going to stop there today. It's um, unfortunately still really cold down here in the workshop. And although we've had the heater on and off, on and off in between filming, it's, um, it's really not very pleasant. So look, I think we're going to leave it there for today. Um, so we haven't quite managed to get all of the front timing gear on. Um, but we will obviously continue with that in the next video, essentially. One final thing I will say on these cam followers is when you're done, just put a couple of squirts of oil in there as well, obviously when it's in there. Um, because, of, again, the cam uh, push rods, uh, sorry, the valve push rods, obviously ride inside there. And you just don't want that to be dry on startup. Um, it needs, you know, you need to have a decent amount of oil in there on startup. So I always just throw a couple of drops or a couple of squirts into these right from the start um, to make sure that they're adequately lubricated. And that's about it. So uh, listen, once again, thanks for joining us. Um, hope that this has been helpful and um, informative in some way. And uh, of course, we hope that you all have a, a good week this coming week. And we'll see you all on the next video. So cheers for now. Bye. And there we go. Good job.